Robert Plank Show, episode 91. How to choose a niche for your internet marketing business and decode the science to making money online. Welcome back to the Robert Plank Show. This is where we talk about working from home, building an online business, and generating that passive income. Copywriter David Ogilvie once said, fail in private, but succeed in public. And that's what we want you to do today and for the next few weeks in your internet marketing business. Maybe you have an idea and you want to know if it's viable or not, or uh, you're trying to sell something. Maybe you made a book, made a product, made a piece of software, made a membership site, and you want to know why it's not selling. And so a few answers to that, right? Um, a few answers to that. And the first thing is that any everything you do in your internet business comes down to list traffic and offers, right? If you don't have an offer, something for someone else to buy, your own product or an affiliate product, well, without that, nothing else gets done. Uh, if you don't have any source of traffic, any way for people on the internet to click over from Facebook, from a Google ad, to find you on a Google search, to find you on iTunes, or even uh, if you have like an Amazon business, to find you on Amazon. If you have a freelancing business, to find you on Fiverr. So without traffic, no one can even find you. And then finally, uh, you build some kind of a list, some kind of repeat customer base, and that can take a bunch of different forms, right? Because uh, on uh, on Amazon, for example, you can't really hang on to those customers, but you can follow up with them. And when someone, for example, buys a kitchen spatula from you, you can click a button uh, by using the feedback patrol tool in our Dropship CEO course. And you can uh, contact someone who bought your kitchen spatula to come back to Amazon.com and leave a review about the product that they just bought. On our profit dashboard course, which is all about how to make money quickly using Fiverr, well, once again, you can't really contact buyers there uh, who maybe so maybe someone uh, paid you for a quick video, a quick audio, uh, a SEO report, whatever, and they paid for this on Fiverr. Well, you're definitely not allowed to contact any customer of yours on Fiverr outside of that site. Uh, and you're definitely not allowed to add anyone to any kind of an email list, but you can always go back, and most people don't do this, you can always go back a month or two later and go to your old buyers and say, well, if you have any other jobs that need done, then go ahead and hire me. And I mean, as a buyer, I've... I've bought from people all the time who do this, who follow up, because I think, oh yeah, it's been a while since I've had some articles made, or it's been a while since I've had uh, a commercial made for my podcast, so I'm going to go and get that done again. So think about that. The list, which is your follow-up, and I mean, that could be you know Facebook, Twitter, email list, uh, but there's also these other ways where we can follow up with people who have bought from us in the past, or are about to buy from us and just remind them one more time to to pay us money uh, and so those those websites I mentioned dropship CEO is great if you want to build an Amazon business profit dashboard is great if you want to build a Fiverr business and if you want to build uh, I guess what we'd call a traditional internet marketing business with your own product for sale your own sales that are your own blog the place for that is income machine.com where we show you how to choose a niche how to create an opt-in page make an email autoresponder sequence, sell something on a sales letter, uh, take payments on a download page, get some traffic and more. But think about that as we're getting ramped up here, list traffic and offers. So you need to be building those pieces in your business, however they apply. But then even to take another bit of a step back, how do you choose a niche? How do you decide something uh, that's going to sell? How do you know if you have some new uh, weight loss uh, what website or some new uh, hypnosis website for fixing your anxiety or you want to put out some videos on how to play the piano well what do how do we decide before we uh, spend six months making an info product how do we figure out ahead of time if we have an idea that's worthwhile and so I mean the next thing I kind of move want to move on to is that no idea is original right any idea that comes up is usually just or I guess is always a combination of previous things that came before right if you think about DVD players well that was just the next iteration of VHS or laser disc tapes iPod was not original because I mean there were uh, mp3 players 
before the iPod, I mean kind of crude ones, uh, and an MP3 player, like a portable MP3 player, is just the next iteration of a Walkman or a Discman. Even crazy crazy companies and things like Facebook, which is the next iteration of MySpace and other social kind of sites. Uh, uh, Uber, which is the next iteration of a taxi. You just combine a taxi with a smartphone. Netflix was just taking what video rental places have been doing for decades and built a better mousetrap, had a better solution. So that's the first thing I want to just kind of get out of your head is that, well, first of all, there is no such thing as an original idea. Uh, it's just combinations of previous ideas. And if you think that you have the craziest, most unique, never before done idea, well, a couple things is if that really is true, then stay away from it because the timing is wrong. That's like, I mean, I I'm sure people tried to make cell phones in the 1970s and sure, no one had done it before, but there is a reason for that. Uh, and so what's good about about uh, what we're going to talk about today is if you do just some quick internet research, people will almost be asking you for specifically what solution what problem to solve but also what language to use and almost even like the phrase of you know, they might even name your product for you but i mean let's just get that out of the way a lot of people get to academic or to like business degree or two in their ivory tower and they look at well i want to be uh, the next uber or i want to make the next ipad well you know microsoft made a, a tablet and hp made tablets 10 years plus before iPads and uh, the timing was just off and they just found a way to make it simpler or make it better or make it some or maybe we're even better in marketing. So you don't need to have an original idea but you should find something that is at the intersection of what people want, what people need, what you're good at and what's fun for you. Okay I'll repeat that what they want, what they need, what you're good at and what's fun for you. Why all four things? Well because I mean, you can figure it out on, on your own. You don't want to be making something that no one's asking for, and you don't want to also hate what you do, and you also don't want to just be a me too. You don't want to be a copycat of someone else. And many times we can easily see the frustrations that we go through uh, as as users of different software programs. So, I mean, if you use, for example, a an online calendaring system, and it's just really awkward and frustrating. If you use uh, video recording software on your computer and it's just frustrating and you say, you know what would be a really great idea is if there was just uh, a calendar system that had this extra feature or hooked in, a, it's like it's almost there but not quite. Or uh, if you use some kind of, uh, like we said the video recorder program, if you'd like it to be just completely a one button solution and less things to mess up, then that could be uh, your better mousetrap. And we're going to break today's training into three components. So the stage one is quick research where you're going around and seeing and basically you're looking for existing competitors and we were looking mostly for competitors that are already making money. Because think about this, if Com existing competitors are already in your space or already making money you can figure out a lot of things you can figure out first of all where their buyers are coming from you can figure out if, if the, you can tell that they are running ads they have a huge Facebook presence uh, lots of people talk about them and recommend them and things like that then we know also that this is a viable solution we just have to find a way to uh, maybe ride their coattails a little bit and also become unique so they've taken a lot of the guesswork uh, out of there for you because I mean, a lot of things on the internet are not very viable solutions. Uh, so for example, if you try to, to clone almost any service that Google or Facebook already provide, well, it doesn't make any sense because why would you create a, a copycat of Gmail or a copycat of Google Calendar if I can already get that for free? And then the other thing is that uh, there are some niches where there's just there's just no clear way to make money. So, for example, if you look at the niche of uh, of people who like couponing, right? People and there's a whole niche of people who just love to uh, clip coupons and share coupons and have a whole coupon database. But if you think about that type of market, they're not they're not looking to buy something, or if they are, it's going to be a really uphill battle. But on the other hand, if you look at 
uh, niches. And you know what? A good place to find niches, just as we're talking right now, is to go to a site called clickbank.com and then click on the marketplace tab and you'll get ideas of lots of little niches. And then there's kind of some interesting quirks in that a lot of things are viable and easy to make money from and other things are things that you should kind of stay away from. For example, playing the piano, playing the guitar, that's a really hot market. Now, is there a lot of competition? Well, sure. So you'd have to find a way to be unique, but a lot of people are willing to drop thousands and thousands of dollars on different equipment and training and things like that on how to play guitar. Now, on the other hand, how about uh, how to play clarinet, how to play the tuba? Well, that doesn't sound as exciting, right? And if you look at that list again, what people want, what people need, well, is anyone really looking to play clarinet? Does anyone jump out of bed and say, all right, you know what would be a great hobby? Learning to play the oboe, right? Uh, so why, well, why is that? Well, if you think about the buyers or you think about what need what need gets someone what problem gets someone to want to play the guitar well a lot of people will want to play the guitar just for fun right because maybe they they played it a little while ago and it's a nice hobby but then who ever plays the tuba or plays the trombone well maybe maybe like a maybe a kid in the school band and then it could be well maybe their their parents are, are looking for something for 20 bucks to go and buy uh this tuba instruction and it's kind of along the same vein of if you think, well, I'm going to sell a, I'm going to have a whole niche on uh, how to get better grades, right? How to get better SAT scores. And people are going to love that because, well, if someone uh, buys my course and learn how to study better and they get better grades, now they can get in a much better college and their whole life will turn out differently. Sounds good in theory, but who the heck is buying an SAT study guide? Again, the person who's consuming something like this is probably 15 years old, 16 years old, 17 years old, and the and the people who are really buying are just the parents. The parents who are saying, well, I've tried everything else. Let me go to the internet to solve this problem, and maybe they'll buy a little $20 guide from you, but there is not much of a a future there at least I'm guessing so how do we know for sure I mean we can kind of think about this and drive ourselves crazy but let's think about how we figure out what people want what people need and then if we can get that combination then then apply that to something that we're good at and something that's fun for us and I mean the problem here with the way most internet marketers approach this is they only go for those last two. They go, they look for things that they're good at and what's fun for them. And so maybe they played the clarinet in high school and they say, oh, I'm going to make a training on clarinet. Or maybe they got really good grades in high school and they're going to teach that. But if there's no need, then everything else is dead in the water. So what do you do? Well, you go on a site called Google. You search for the name of your niche and forum. So guitar playing forum. And you go and you find uh, some of these these message boards and nowadays I mean Facebook groups are kind of taking this over and you want to be checking out these sites but there's a few things you don't want to be doing okay you don't want to be registering for an account on these forums you don't want to be taking a bunch of notes you don't want to be printing off a bunch of pages you don't want to be reading and combing through all these uh, all these posts you just want to go and kind of scroll through the uh, the titles of all these message boards just to get an idea of what people are are talking about. So uh, I've opened up some tabs. One tab I opened is for a site called the Warrior Forum just because I'm kind of curious and that's an area where I know a lot more and I mean I should probably look up like a WordPress forum as well and then for fun uh, I'm going to so I guess we'll look at the WordPress support forum or maybe WordPress and Code Canyon. All right so on one on one side I've got uh, Warrior Forum and the WordPress Support Forum and uh, the Code Canyon Forum. Oh, never, never mind. That's just uh, forum for software you could buy. And then I've opened up a guitar forum. There's a site called Ultimate Guitar, GuitarForums.com, and AcousticGuitarForum.com. And so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to click uh, some of these tabs. And just off the top of my head here, I'm going to go and I'm going to look at... Uh, guitar techniques and I'm gonna look at 
so I'm, gonna, I'm just going to go tab by tab and just sight unseen uh, on this podcast, kind of tell you what I'm seeing. So I'm on a site called the Warrior Forum. I'm seeing uh, things about revenue share programs, link building strategies, affiliate marketing, Facebook campaign, search engine optimization. Someone's asking about uh, Aweber and duplicate content and SEO, 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 autoresponder, website traffic traffic funnels, how to earn from Facebook, and then the, we'll click to the third page, SEO from scratch. So are you starting to see a pattern? Is that at least the current trend on this internet marketing site called the Warrior Forum is all this stuff about traffic. So if we made a traffic course and half of it was on free forms of traffic, uh, like search engine optimization, the last half was on paid forms of traffic. That's something that I could further flesh out. Now let me go again and look in the WordPress support forum in the troubleshooting section. People are worried about their RSS feed, moving from WordPress.com to self-hosted, spam bots, categorize a post, uh, make the site load faster, customize things. Uh, resizing images, search engine optimization again, uh, different errors, error on image upload, updating WordPress. So we're starting to see that people are just dealing with just errors in general. And if we could walk them through a complete system from how to uh, put a domain on there, how to deal with spam bots, how to uh, get some traffic, how to deal with hackers, well, then that's the beginnings of a uh, of, of a course of a product there for us on the ultimate guitar forum I'm looking and so many times uh, we can sort by number of replies so I'm gonna do that so the most replied posts on the guitar forum are tuning how to hold it uh, when I play should I be able to see the strings arm move it uh, flying fingers ring fingers how to play really fast cold hands chords so we could see that if if we had a series of, of videos this could really help people to uh, to get these things right like tuning or to get the uh, like the hand placement right and if we threw in some kind of a one-on-one -on -one Skype coaching bonus uh, then we could we could easily uh, help someone out and they could just on demand get help with their guitar playing without dealing with an instructor. All right, last couple ones, guitarforum.com. Let me see if I can sort this one by replies as well. And so we see how to play covers, how to get as good as X performer, how to play by ear, identify key, chords, harmonics, uh, blues playing, shredding, playing fast, playing fast, accuracy, and then acoustic guitar form. If I sort this one by replies again, uh, then we can see people are talking about like if they own multiple guitars for different reasons or downsizing to just one guitar. So knowing specifically which guitar to get if you don't have one, that's kind of interesting. And so I'm just going to close that tab. So what then, I mean, you can kind of see like just, just my thought process going through and seeing what are the what are the really hot topics right what are the topics in message boards that get a lot of replies and just by scrolling through what's the trend i see over and over again so then the next step you'd then do is then go to a site called amazon.com and search for other existing books about guitar once again not to copy but just so that you can get a feel of what other people are talking about and i guess i was just kind of kind of leave leave it up here but I will search, uh, I'll go and search guitar and then I'll switch to books. So that way uh, we're looking for guitar books and not just guitars themselves. So I'll open, I'll choose three, I'll open them in new tabs. Teach yourself to play guitar, guitar aerobics, a 52 week one lick per day workout program. And then there's music theory for guitarists. I don't like that, but it has a ton of reviews. So we'll just go with that. So we'll just pick the three top results in uh, on Amazon and then we can click on the uh, the cover on Amazon and then go to the table of contents section so I'll open up all three of these in a table of contents and we'll see again what are the similarities in all of this and I think that okay so guitar aerobics um, looks like you they just go through different rhythms so exercises rhythm tracks 
and then it's just like straight up a workbook. So I'm going to close that one. Uh, teach yourself to play guitar, getting started, major scale, minor scale, power chords, pattern, scales, chords, uh, and then music theory, scales, intervals, harmonizing chords, harmonizing blues harmony. So just off the top of our head, well, it's going to be really important that we talk about uh, how to read music and how to do chords and things like that. But we could probably uh, be at an advantage because we could make it interesting. And, and this way we can avoid the, the academic downfall. So instead of talking about music theory, music scales and key signatures, we can work them into something more interesting. So the next stage and, and the next part in this quick research stage is to search on the uh, search for the top ranked Amazon books. And once again, don't buy the book, don't take a bunch of notes, just kind of scan through the table of contents and see what the commonalities are. Uh, not only with, between like between the books themselves, but like what is the general, what's the gist of what this guitar book tells us. So the, the whole point of all this, well, and then the next stage, if you have a list or any kind of reach, uh, kind of casually ask people what their problem is. And don't send them to a survey, but literally, if you have any kind of a Facebook fan page or email list, email that list and ask them to reply asking where they're stuck. Don't tell them you're going to make a product. Just honestly ask where they're stuck. And you're going to notice that most of the replies are all kind of the same area. So in internet marketing, uh, we get a lot of replies are focus. And then some of them are choosing a niche. So imagine that. Then I know to make a podcast about focus or a product about it. And then a product about choosing a niche. So the focus product is time management on crack.com. And the product on making a niche is IncomeMachine.com, and you should check those out and buy them both right now. So, stage one, quick research, find that intersection of what people want, what they need, what you're good at, and what's fun for you. And we focus on those first two by doing searches on forums to get uh, the, the common thread. We search and look around on a table of contents for uh, the most popular top ranked Amazon books, and then ask your list if you have one. So what we want to do is build a better mousetrap than your competitors and, you know, find the holes they're leaving out. And maybe uh, if you have if you already have a product and there are competitors out there, absorb those competitors changes or combine things from two competitors or even give away one piece that your competitors normally charge for. So this is really important. I think that it's important to teach something that you've already known about for several years. So that way, you're, you don't have to learn anything new and you kind of come at it with you're, you're at least somewhat of an expert and then you're making it simple. You're dumbing it down for uh, someone who's just finding out about it because you have achieved mastery. And so this way you don't have to fake it till you make it. You don't have to learn stuff and then teach it to the, ne the next day. And if you really, really, really want to go out in some other niche like, like guitar or a real estate or something, don't make a pen name. Don't invent a new identity. Just partner up with someone who's already in that space and then help them out with the, the marketing. So quick research. Find the intersection of what people want, what they need, what you're good at, and what's fun for you. Forum search, Amazon table of contents, ask your list. Then we move on to stage two out of three to find out if your competitors are making any money. So you look around and find competitors. And I know that it's, it's, uh, it's tough to stomach at first other people who have already beat you to your dream. But it's OK. This is proof that this market, this niche you're looking for, is already viable. So you should be thanking your competitors. And the other great thing about, uh, about your competitors is that any, any issues that you're coming across, like how to you know, market your, your stuff, or if uh, email marketing is dying, or if they have other competitors, like they're dealing with the exact same problems that you are, and maybe even their business is on the decline, or they're just kind of old and tired. So now you're the fresh blood that that niche needs, especially if you can find a way to be unique and stand out. Uh, maybe you create some kind of guitar software or outsource that, and then you can partner up with those other existing guitar marketers marketers and now your competitors become people you can partner up with. So my question is, well, 
are there high ticket items and maybe even seminars like offline conferences and recurring membership sites about this so if I go to Google search again and I search guitar membership site if I search guitar seminar guitar conference and guitar uh, course all right so I've never searched this before I don't even know what's gonna come up but I'm just gonna open up I've got Active Melody, More Than Guitar. There's a, a Udemy course about guitar. So I'm going to see what kind of. So we have guitar lessons and this person's price. Uh, so it looks like this person like just does one on one lessons. So you have to fill out his form uh, to get the price. So that's OK. But we know that there is kind of a demand for this. People have web pages where you can hire them outright by the hour. And it looks like so you can hire him okay for 55 minutes for 20 pounds per guitar lesson so kind of interesting uh guitar king we've got jam play and guitar tracks 17 bucks a month we've got activemelody.com so it looks like this is a bunch like 150 guitar lessons and i'll scroll to the bottom of this and membership sign up 69 bucks a year so that's not as exciting as like real estate but kind of interesting there's a free membership site i'll close that there's a 30 dollar udemy course who, and it's actually from the same person who offered the one-on-one -on -one training so that's interesting uh and 645 students have already bought that 30 dollar guitar course on a site called udemy.com so very interesting uh and then We've got a guitar player you. So how the heck do I join that one? Register. So it looks like there's a free version and a paid version. I can't figure out how to buy the paid version because he's not a very good marketer. Um, it looks like looking for guitar seminars. Well, we've got guitarseminars.com, Guitar Workshop Plus, some like New York City thing is doing it and so it looks like that there are for sure offline conferences where uh, guitar players of all kinds can meet right like if they're just like a soloist like a performer or someone who just like has money to burn these are all good things and even if we search for a guitar course well I can see that there are uh, paid ads for a guitar course for that jam play offer again and then something called learn and master and if I order now that course is $164 for a 10 DVD set. So already, well, you could you could see what it, like what it is that makes them special. And if you offered a version of that guitar training, but someone can click and buy it right now, and they'll have to wait for DVDs to come, even better. So we looked all around to find competitors, and we're looking for high ticket items, offline seminars, and membership sites in this niche, in the guitar niche. And then as we were doing it as well, we were keeping an eye out for paid advertisements. Now, why is that? Because if if some competitors of yours or future competitors are paying for advertisements and they're doing it month after month, then chances are they're making money from that. And then the other thing we want to look at is, um, and this is something for, this is kind of a little bit of a more of a deep research, but we're looking for some high profile uh, uh, people so I think that there was like that uh, that guitar Udemy course there was and actually actually a good idea too is to type in your niche and U D E M Y course and that just gives you a ton of uh, different uh, courses right there that so that way we know people are paying money so uh, there's some guy Eric Andreas who has a lot of guitar courses and there was one person where I recognize his name but I'm not seeing it anymore but we'd kind of just like look around and we'd see like do we notice the same names coming up over and over again and then search just their name and then look and see if they have some old websites look and see if they have some YouTube videos 
that are years old, like three, four, five years old, but then they're still updating and they're still putting out new courses. They're still putting out new YouTube videos. So why is that important? Why isn't it important to find, to first of all, recognize like the top players, like even like just the top three, four players in your niche and then kind of do a search for them. Why is it important to find uh, that they put out a book three years ago, but they also put out a book last month? Why is it important to see if they have a podcast that they started years ago, but it's still up to date? Well, because now we know that they made it years ago, and so like they've kept their sites around. They're established, but they're also putting out new stuff. So we know that if I mean, if someone's doing something for three to five years and they're they're making money with it. There, there's some kind of validation from that. So that's where that stage is. That second. So first, the quick research. We kind of look around on websites and get ideas. The second is to look at competitors and just see if people are selling a ton of stuff all around the internet on Udemy, on Amazon. If you search Google, you'll find ads, and hopefully you find something. Like we found some $164 DVD course. We found some. $37 per month membership sites so we know that people are charging money all the time so that you'll fit right in right so that uh, the marketplace won't be mad that you're you're charging for money because other people are doing it you just have to find just a little bit of an edge a little bit of a twist or a spin on what everyone else is talking about so that you yourself stand out and your spin on it might just necessarily be that people get results faster than the boring academic way everyone else does it. Your spin on it might be that they get the thing they're buying immediately because it looks like, at least in this guitar niche, a lot of people sell DVDs or they do one-on-one -on -one coaching and you could say, well, forget one-on-one -on -one coaching or DVDs, buy this and you get the videos streamed instantly. So high ticket items, seminars, membership sites, paid ads, and then find the high profile players and see if their internet presence has been around for a long time. And finally, stage three, find out if there's a future in it. So here's my question to you is why is why is weight loss and why is having a six pack at any age or why is eliminating man boobs? Why is all that a good idea uh, for a niche? But back pain is not. Well, because weight loss is an ongoing problem that you can continuously help someone with, but back pain isn't. And same the same thing for getting good grades or getting good SAT scores. That's that's okay for a little while, but what are you going to sell to them in a couple of years once they've been on your list for a while? And what's I mean, frustrating too is, I mean, what if by the time someone joins your list, checks you out, buys even something low ticket from you, maybe their their child is 16, 17. You say, here's this course on how to how to get good grades. Well, maybe then they take a couple of years and 18, 19, they're, they're ready to buy from you, but now they're almost done with college. So then there's no there's real no no reason for it as opposed to uh, if you if you ha were in the dating niche. I mean, people need new dating uh, training all the time, right? Or people backslide and forget about what they learned and what they did all the time. It's the same thing with weight loss. It's the same thing with uh, with internet marketing. There's always a need for new money coming in. It's the same thing for WordPress plugins because there's always going to be some kind of a plugin. It's the same thing for hypnosis because if, sometimes if you do uh, the same hypnosis, it kind of wears off. You get used to it. You need more stuff. So find something with a future in it and so having an individual product about uh, fixing your back pain that could be okay but then we have to say well what else can we sell them maybe it's just um general health and like well-being and alternative medicine and uh, extending your lifespan and things like that and I mean you go around on these forums and you see everyone who's just frustrated and doesn't know what to do and is confused and has all kinds of conflicting advice and because you choose something or are narrowing down something that it's what people want and what people need, well, we know that there is a, a want and need for it if there's all kind of, if there first of all are message boards in the niche and if people are talking about it over and over again and you just see that everyone is just frustrated by trying to comb through the mess of free and conflicting advice on the internet. 
And then if you choose something that you're good at and is fun for you, then you can shortcut having to learn all this stuff. You just kind of teach it yourself. So what kind of huge offer can you sell for a hundred bucks that's worth a thousand dollars or ten thousand dollars? Could you show someone how to how to become a realtor or how to or give them real estate training or give them the, the techniques and the strategies that, you know, maybe whatever course they took, uh, help them a little bit, but now they need to be making more ongoing money with real estate. So now if you sold a course like that for a hundred bucks and you could show someone how to make an extra couple thousand dollars off the next real estate transaction, well, isn't that worth it? Could you sell someone a guitar training course where otherwise they'd have to they'd have to pay someone 50 bucks an hour just to get a fraction of what you showed them in your $100 training course? Isn't that worth it? Could you give could you sell someone an app or a software program or a WordPress plugin that they can plug into their existing website and make an extra few thousand bucks from it? Well, so now if, if we kind of take it to this point, we can narrow down what our exact idea is and you can drive yourself crazy thinking about, well, I have an idea for this and that. And I mean, it, and the other thing too about this is in the long run, you don't know 100% for sure unless you put it out there and tell for sure. But if you go and look around on forums and figure out what people are asking for, you identify competitors, find a future in it, well, then we can begin to, and we, now it's coming together and we can figure out what is going to give someone at least a thousand dollars worth of value, which isn't that much, which isn't that much to ask for. If we can give someone an extra thousand dollars worth of value in buying the correct guitar equipment and not wasting their time with um, just who, whatever guitar instructor happens to live in their town. If you can uh, teach someone stock trading uh, advice or show them how to use a specific piece of software to make a thousand dollars in the next their next uh, stock trade, there you go. That is very well worth a hundred bucks, and that helps you get over the all the little hangups and self doubts. The, the self doubt that says that you're not good enough, or you have to be a perfectionist, or psyching yourself out looking at the other competitors. Find something you can sell for a hundred bucks that's worth a thousand to ten thousand dollars. And as this offer that you're thinking of is kind of coming together, think about especially if this is a training course. But I guess even if it's an app or software, how can you simplify it and make it brain dead simple? And in training course terms, in information product terms, if you're trying to teach someone how to play a guitar, what can you checklist? and systematize to dumb it down and make it super easy to follow. And I know that you might be thinking, well, you know, guitar playing or learning how to draw is such an art. Well, okay, but in order to get someone 80% of the way there, you can teach them steps, right? Even in like drawing, you teach different techniques, right? Like shading and perspective and stuff like that. And in guitar, we, well, from our research earlier, from looking at other competitors' books, you can tell them about scales and chords and maybe show them some shortcuts to just playing, like playing the most popular songs so they can get some early wins and then kind of sneak in the stuff they, they need about uh, chords and rhythm and, and strings and guitar maintenance and things like that. But checklists make it just so as simple as you can where they just kind of go down the list and by the time they finish that list, now they know how to play the guitar or now they know how to they have an online business, but we want to dumb it down and make it so easy to follow that there is no guesswork involved. You say, buy this guitar, or if you already have a guitar, use that one. We're going to uh, play this song first. We're going to get these guitar strings. Hold the guitar like this. Uh, play this note. Play that note. And the same deal for setting up an online business. In our income machine course, we, we show you how to choose a niche, how to set up an opt-in page, how to make an autoresponder sequence, how to make a sales letter, how to make a download page, all those things. And then you can just go ahead and apply that. In our profit dashboard course, we say you join this site called Fiverr. You choose one of the templates that we have to offer you. Now here's how to get it all set up. Here's how to market yourself. Here's how to get traffic to your Fiverr gig. Here's how to get your first few sales. Here's how to then uh, go through and do these things to increase yourself in the Fiverr ranking and get repeat sales and scale up. So when money comes in, you get a paid the same amount for a lot less work and a lot less time. And we move on from there. But there's three stages here to choosing a niche, 
in your internet marketing business, no matter what niche it is, first you do the research. I can't stress this enough. Find the intersection of what people want, what people need, what you're good at, and what's fun for you. Then do a form search, then look on Amazon, then ask your list if you have one. Identify competitors. Are there high ticket items, seminars, and membership sites? Are there paid ads? Are there top players in this niche? And then find out if there's a future in it. Are there other products you can sell to them? High ticket stuff, recurring stuff. And then I think if you run it all through that filter, you can narrow it down. If you're trying to decide between uh, three or four different ideas, now this can narrow down you to one and get 100% focus. And as we're winding down this call, I want to reiterate uh, four daily tasks. Okay, This is the best time management secret I have ever had. And that just means every day, do something, take some tasks, sit out at the computer and knock out something for 45 minutes, 45 minutes, 45 minutes, and then 15 minutes spaced throughout the day with long breaks. And if you don't have that amount of time today, even just five minutes, five minutes, five minutes, five minutes is still better than nothing. Most people kid themselves. They think they do 20 or 30 or 50 little things. They think they put in eight to 10 hour days, but they don't. You need to nar narrow down what are those top four most pressing things? And don't make a to-do list because you'll never finish that. Don't prioritize your to-do list because you'll end up just doing the easy things and not doing what's important. So whatever those four most important things are to do today, and if you're choosing your niche, maybe it's go through those uh, those those steps, but complete those four things. And bonus little tip for you, if you find that day in and day out, you still have that same list of four things and you just can't crack it. Choose one of the four things and break it up into four parts and just even if even if you think you're going to get through it way too early and you won't have anything else to do for the rest of the day, just choose one of the four things. So if you say I need the four things I got to do today are choose my niche, register a domain name, put up a website, put up a headline, and this just has been following you around for the last five days straight. And you're just like, I can't do it. Well, because you made your, your tasks too big. And the problem with having any system that you don't follow is that you begin ignoring that system, right? If you have a system where um, you put stuff on a calendar and it pops up and it keeps popping up and you say, yeah, whatever, I'll get to that. And you don't do it. Then over time that calendar becomes useless or have you ever had someone or have you ever known someone where they say well I set all my clocks 10 minutes fast that way I'm never late but then you look at a clock and they say oh yeah that clock says 9 30 but it's actually 9 20 because I set my clock 10 minutes fast it's, it sounds ridiculous but that's what happens with most people on the internet when they get stuck they think they get burned out things like that it's because you don't have a very good system and it might be because your system is too complicated you don't follow it you disassociate so the way to reassociate especially with four daily tasks is you list four things that you'll get done today right one thing that it takes 45 minutes, 45, 45, 45. So today, uh, this task in particular is to record and publish the, actually, I guess, recording the podcast episode is just one task because it went a little long. Publishing will be the next task. Uh, but if I couldn't even get that, even if I couldn't get uh, any of my other tasks done, if it was just like the same thing every day, every day, every day, can't do it, can't do it, can't do it, then I would pull out just the one task of making the podcast. And I would break that into sections. And I would say, okay, well, all I'm doing today is just, I needed to, to decide what will the title of my podcast be? Let me figure out three sections and then three talking points in each of those sections. And then I'll click record and I'll upload it. Well, cool. Now that might have only taken me about an hour, but that's progress. And now I'm broken through. And now the four tasks tomorrow won't be those same four things that I didn't get done. Anyway, a little bit of a tangent there, but check us out at Dropship CEO if you want to build an Amazon business, ProfitDashboard.com if you want to build a Fiverr business, and IncomeMachine.com if you want to build a web-based business where you sell information products, have an email autoresponder, a blog, and so much more. I'm so excited for you about to join IncomeMachine.com and ProfitDashboard.com because we have so many shortcuts to make it so simple and fun you get the magic feeling back again that you had when you started this online business thing and anything was possible 
now the possibilities can come roaring back. Hello, my name is Robert Plank, and I want to make sure that you go to robertplankshow.com slash iTunes. Give us a five-star rating and review. Check me out at robertplank.com and also at incomemachine.com and profit-board.com. That's a lot of .coms, but I have a lot of websites, and I sell a lot of stuff, and I know that there's some things, a lot of things probably, that will help you and your online business. So check out those websites right now. I'm Robert Plank, and that was how to choose a niche for your internet marketing business and decode the science to making money online. Thanks for listening. Go give us a five-star rating, and thank you.